Thanks, Woody. Missed you. Why do the good ones seem to be gone too soon? We're talking snacks, of course. Here are 10 discontinued snacks Americans miss the most. I miss that. Pringles Prince. Do you remember that? Although this discontinued snack officially hit stores in 2004, Pringles Prince began development in 2002. The idea was simple in concept, but complicated in execution. The plan was to slap words and images onto each and every chip in a tube of Pringles. The idea evolved from a test run with an inkjet printer in the Pringles office. To develop a process using edible inks and varying colors, they were able to apply images to the chips as they came fresh out of the fryer. Each chip included entertaining tidbits bits like jokes, facts, and pictures, and eventually promotional tie-ins with games like Trivial Pursuit, alongside popular movies and TV shows. Although the popularity waned and the novelty wore off, due largely to consumers being turned off by blue ink residue powder at the bottom of the tubes, there are still fans nostalgic for Pringles prints. Wouldn't it be nice to get your jokes from a Pringles chip instead of Twitter? You ran over me with your car. Original Dunkaroos. We should go get Dunkaroos. Here's a famous 1990s snack legend that became a victim of changing tastes. While the dippable cookies and frosting Dunkaroos were officially discontinued in the USA for eight years between 2012 and 2020, by the time they came back, they were as unrecognizable as an old school 90s floral print bucket hat. I didn't recognize you. The recipes had been tweaked from their classic tastes, and fans who scarfed down packs of their cookie and frosting favorites during childhood recess were quick to notice. While the new cookies are automatically less tasty due to reduced sugar content, they also lack their original cinnamon tinge. According to reviews, they are thinner and crumbly, which made them harder to dunk, and came in smaller shapes, which meant inconvenient frosting-covered fingers. Reddit posters also dunked on the Dunkaroos frosting describing it as just some cake frosting, like you'd find on a supermarket shelf, and, quote, nothing like we had as kids. Maybe we miss original Dunkaroos because they truly were better, or maybe we miss the childlike exuberance of the 90s. Either way, the original Dunkaroos need to make a true comeback. Come back! The Wonka Bar we need more Wonka bars. The Wonka bar was the centerpiece of Roald Dahl's 1964 book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When the book was set to be adapted into a movie in 1971, the chance came around for the famous candy bar to come to life. The Quaker Oats Company committed $3 million of financing towards the film as long as they had exclusive manufacturing and sales rights to the Wonka bar. But their product rollout was anything but whimsical. The bars were scheduled to be introduced a month before the release of the film, but were pulled from shelves almost instantly due to terrible taste and and even worse consistency. Yeah. After the rights of the bar changed hands several times over the decades, the Nestle Company took control in 1988, eventually rechristening the brand to Willy Wonka Candy Company. In addition to the Wonka Bar's chocolate and graham cracker combo, the brand also released other Willy Wonka-inspired treats like Everlasting Gobstoppers and Scrum Diddlyumptious Bars in the 1970s and Nerds in the 1980s. But by the time a second film adaptation of the book was released in 2005, sales were stumbling for the Wonka brand and couldn't be rescued by any number of promotional tie-ins with the new movie. By 2017, Nestle had dropped the Wonka branding entirely, and it was a bitter end for the Wonka bar. But as fate would have it, the rights were sold yet again. As of 2018, the rights to the Willy Wonka Candy Company are now a subsidiary of the Ferraro Confectionery Company in Italy. So once again, you just might see a familiar purple wrapper signaling the return of the Wonka bar to its former chocolatey glory. Willy Wonka did it. First time here? Then become an official Babble Topper by hitting that subscribe button. See how easy that was? Philadelphia Cheesecake Snack Bars. Wait, they have a snack bar? Back when Dunkaroos ruled the schoolyard, another 90s snack went viral when Kraft Philadelphia Cream Cheese pioneered a series of commercials featuring winged angels talking about just how heavenly the taste of Philly was. By the turn of the century, Kraft tried to take advantage of that popularity by creating a convenient product for pre-made snack fans. Philly introduced a refrigerated snack bar that had Philadelphia cream cheese layered on top 
top of a graham cracker bar, and they typically featured a flavored jelly topping. However, they were only available from 1999 to 2003 and were discontinued due to manufacturing difficulties with the graham crackers. So Philly decided to stick to their tried and true dips and spreads moving forward. However, in those few years, cheesecake snack bars gained a loving following that still exists, as a quick Google search reveals a seemingly endless number of copycat home recipes to replicate the famous strawberry cheesecake bars. In fact, a Change.org petition popped up in 2017 and has racked up nearly 50,000 signatures demanding the return of the bars. But with the product being discontinued for so long, Philly fans might need some angels and a miracle to bring them back for good. I need a miracle. Original Butterfinger Butterfingers, huh? When Nestle sold off some of its chocolate brands to the Ferrero Group in 2018, the Butterfinger candy bar was part of the deal. Long gone are the days of Bart Simpson shilling Butterfingers back in the 1990s. Wait, I was in a commercial? I don't remember this at all. And as of the sale, so is the specific Butterfinger formula that made the bar successful enough to be partnered with the Simpsons in the first place. Ferrero stated that they started tweaking the Butterfinger formula almost immediately after acquiring the Nestle portfolio to cut out unnecessary ingredients that they considered added a waxy and less chocolatey or cocoa-centered taste. They also added a double-thick wrapper to preserve the pureness of the new, more natural flavor. According to in-house taste tests, as well as a half-dozen reviewers from Business Insider, Ferrero had succeeded in improving Butterfinger. But Viewers and testers aren't customers. Despite being pushed with what Ferrero called its biggest ad campaign in a decade, complete with a resurrection and remix of Bart Simpson's line to Nobody better lay a finger on my butterfinger. Fans did not respond well to the changes. The social media backlash was swift and furious, with fans swearing off any further purchases of the new recipe, demanding Ferrero, quote, quit pretending the new recipe is okay, and straight up calling it trash and freaking nasty. The Ferrero company, however, saw things much differently. The new ingredients eventually increased sales and to a wider audience, but the hardcore fans will always Always want to lay a finger on an old school Butterfinger. It's not the same anymore. Lay's wavy milk chocolate covered chips. With chocolate chips. <laughs> Crazy town. <laughs> Let's do it. While the combo of Philly's tangy and salty cream cheese mixed with a sweet strawberry topping wasn't long for this world, the concept wasn't new, and Kraft wasn't the first or last to experiment with the idea. But it also wasn't the first time a salty-slash-sweet combination was eventually discontinued. When Lay's tried their hand at it by dipping wavy potato chips into milk chocolate for a limited release on Valentine's Day in 2013, they were piggybacking off an age-old old concept of adding chocolate to salts. As the story goes, in 16th century Germany, a chocolatier and a pretzel baker decided to join forces between their two companies, and the tradition of salty, chocolate-covered treats was born. The Lay's version, attempted in the 21st century, never caught on and hasn't seen another national release, limited or otherwise, since 2015. The concept is basic enough that fans have put together various online recipes to try recreating them at home, and even Lay's has a DIY at-home recipe be on their website. But the lack of a sustained company release of Lay's wavy milk chocolate covered chips has left their fans feeling much saltier than sweet. Ow, ow! Hi, I said no salt! Hershey's Swoops. More snacks, more snacks, more snacks. Here's a snack we missed that skipped the salty part of the chocolate Lay's equation and went straight for the sweetness. Hershey's Swoops were unveiled to the world in 2003 and were potato chip-shaped chocolates that resembled Pringles chips more than wavy lays. The thin and crispy chocolate confectionaries were marked as helping with portion control since they were sold in boxes that portion out the swoops into smaller containers to be grabbed on the go. Each box of 18 swoops had three smaller and separate chip containers inside. 
and each of those had half a dozen chip-shaped chocolates in it. Each of the three resembled plastic pudding cups or fruit cups, complete with foil lids that could be peeled off after sealing in the freshness. Swoop's boxes came in recognizable Hershey brand candy flavors, including York peppermint patties, Almond Joy, Reese's peanut butter cups, and classic Hershey's milk chocolate. And they were a big hit at first. But Swoop's barely survived three years on supermarket shelves before being shelved in August of 2006. Research at the time noted they were discontinued due to poor marketing, as an astounding 86% of people surveyed said they'd never even knew the product existed. With numbers like that, it's sad to say that Hershey's Swoops might never swoop back into our lives. I'll never see it again. Wildberry Jolly Ranchers. That's it, berries. Berries? Lots of berries. Everyone's favorite sweetly suckable hard candy has gone through its share of changes. What was originally a set of three flavors eventually expanded to over a dozen and has also seen some temporary experimental tastes over the decades. But one particular set of flavors might be the most missed, and that would be the Wild Berry Jolly Ranchers discontinued in 2012. These wild and tangy tastes came in a set of five flavors per bag, consisting of raspberry lemonade, strawberry watermelon, wild strawberry, mountain berry, and blue raspberry. While buying a bag of Wild Berry Ranchers has been impossible for over a decade, a couple of the flavors were just too darn good, and they managed to survive the cancellation of wild berry bags. Wild strawberry existed in the fruit and sour bags until they themselves were discontinued, and mountain berry was part of the fruity bash bags, but was eventually replaced by peach. Blue raspberry is now part of original flavor packs and is the last remaining holdover from the wild berry Jolly Ranchers, which were apparently just too wild for everyone's tastes. Too wild. Wild fruit jello. <clears throat> Jello? Jello? Is this thing on? Jello? Jolly Rancher wasn't the only snack brand to get wild with their flavor profiles, but much like the hard candy ones, Jello's attempt eventually met a discontinuation demise. Released in 1968, Jell-O's wild varieties were wild strawberry, wild cherry, and wild raspberry, and they survived the store shelves and competition from dozens of other Jell-O flavors for several decades. While the non-wild standard flavors of each are still around today, they lack the tart sweetness of the classic wild varieties. Facebook posts as far back as 2012 have drawn online attention to this fact, demanding the return of the wild Jell-O options. But as recently as six years ago, the company remained adamant that the wild fruit fun is over and there are no plans to bring it back. And nothing will bring her back. <laughs> Unless... Jell-O Pudding Bites. Pudding. Pudding. Wild Fruit wasn't Jell-O's first outside-the-box idea, and this one abandoned the box entirely. Or, in this case, abandoned the pudding cup. Tossing away the inconvenient thinking that you need a cup and or a spoon to get your Jell-O pudding fix, Jell-O pudding bites had a short-lived run in the early 2000s, encasing different flavors of pudding inside bite-sized chocolates. Pudding Bites were released in chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla flavors, and are fondly recalled across social media platforms like Facebook and Reddit. However, when their run was ending in the fall of 2004, Pudding Bites were receiving website reviews that called them barely edible and truly terrible. A four-year-old Change.org petition to bring them back garnered a measly 250 signatures. So maybe Pudding Bites are more fondly remembered than they are fondly missed. I don't miss it. Got a favorite you miss? Let us know. And tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.